Hello, I'm Rob Wielden, Operations Director of Nixine Publishing. Uh, we publish a monthly journal on uh, science, the technology, the market uh, in the world of graphene and 2D materials. And today I've got the great pleasure of talking to Chris Castle, who's the organiser of the world's first graphene hackathon. So welcome, Chris. How are you today? Hi, afternoon, Rob. I'm really good, thanks. Yeah. Uh, but perhaps we can begin if you tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, what you do and uh, how you got involved in the Graphene Hackathon? Yeah, so um, I'm a PhD student uh, at the University of Manchester, um, working with Graphene perovskite solar cells, class of, of, material, of photovoltaic material, which have a great deal of promise, but suffer from environmental stability problems. Uh, so we try and incorporate graphene and then monitor how they degrade over time. So what does the graphene do? Well, um, it's a bit of an open-ended question. So there's, <laughs> yeah. um, there's literature regarding both stability and also sort of device performance. Uh, so improving the efficiency of these solar cells. Um, and it primarily acts as a charge carrier. So when um, when a photon comes and hits your uh, solar cell, it creates charge and that charge needs to be extracted from the solar cell to actually do any useful work. Um, and graphene being an excellent conductor mm. of electricity yeah. um, can be incorporated into the structure and whip those electrons and holes away mm. nice and quickly and get them using, get them creating electricity and doing useful work. So how did yeah. you get involved with the hackathon then? What was the inspiration behind it? Um, well, so um, I'm part of a um, graphene CDT uh, through the National Graphene Institute. Yeah. Um, so there's about 20 uh, or so fellow PhD students every year in the same sort of cohort. So um, it's been a really nice way to do a PhD, actually. You get, um, and we all have sort of a similar idea about graphene. In a way, we felt like it was a, sol a solution in search of a problem. We really wanted to try and explore how we could, we could impact the world and incorporate graphene uh, into as many different things as possible. And we've seen the hackathon concept is quite a common thing in the world of software where uh, coders will go and try and solve like a, a problem, try and hack, hack a piece of code, get it to do what they want or break into something as quickly as possible. Yeah. Uh, and that format of re really tight time constraints really sort of focuses your energy in a great way. And we wondered if that was possible um, with a more practical form using yeah. Um, graphene and electronics. So we knew about graphene inks um, yeah. and how they work and how they're sort of very emergent um, and have a great deal of potential at scale. But again, there isn't really this like really compelling USP. And I think one of the other things that's really a really important thing that maybe people in the graphene community forget is that you know we all have everyone in graphene everyone in science has their own particular perspective on the world they have their own problems that they encounter from day to day and with any sort of innovation when you're looking to solve a problem the problems you're that you end up thinking that you could solve come from your own personal experience um, so the hackathon was also an opportunity to try and get people who don't have the opportunity to work with graphene to come and see what it is and see how it could solve a problem in their lives or a problem that they've experienced before. So getting non-scientists involved with graphene was a real was a was a real motivation for us. Um, I remember I, I I was I was there last November. I came on the Sunday, and I can remember the sort of energy and the excitement that was in the mm. room. And when they came to the countdown to the end, you know, everybody was counting down. I took a little yeah. video of it, and uh, you could feel all that sort of energy, sort of you know, just being focused, and then um, pitching of the ideas and the innovations at the judging session. Mm. But what were your what were your highlights from the weekend? The the memory the memories are overwhelmingly positive. Yeah. Um, trying to pick out like individual moments. Also, I was so exhausted by the end of <laughs> yes. it. Uh, we were up for about 30 hours. Yes, yes. Um, but they, they, a couple of, the, sort of the, the overall energy, as you were saying, was I mean, really stuck with me. Like, and throughout the whole event, every time someone had a, like a problem that they were sort of bashing their heads against a wall over, and you, mm. I'd come back over and be like, how are you getting on? Trying to like, help people out. And that, those moments when they, 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 they solve their problem and that, that look on their face multiple times was, was you know, really powerful. The standout moment, for me was definitely right at the end when uh, we'd given out all the prizes and the, the final prize which our the organizing team had organized in secret so that the guy Vicente who was sort of the original brains behind the whole yeah. idea um, we bought him a pair of uh, Innovate graphene running shoes 
Oh yes, yes. I've which we that. which we didn't tell him about, and so we surprised him with that at the end. Um, as sort of a thank you from us as well, yeah. because you know he he, he had the, the vision to start with, and the look, like so sort the of look on his face, and the look, every, everyone in the room. It was a really like heartwarming moment, and it really yeah. sort of felt like the culmination of the whole event. But well, what amazed me were some of the innovations that and ideas that people had. And mm. um, the one, and I have to own up, I lifted this, but this was the um, sensor, oh, yes. the water, yes, sen- the uh, water moisture sensor. sensor. Um, yeah. And it was just just so simple, so easy, and could yeah. have potentially such a big impact. Yeah, and it was something that, that we, we saw this over and over again throughout the event, like ideas that I'd never even conceived of. And, and actually that particular, that particular product was really powerful, even yeah. just in, in, the, in the pitch, like how effective it was at being able to um, separate out all the constituents of a particular liquid. And that was really, really impressive. I believe the team that um, created that, they won the £5,000 Geek Prize. Yes, they did. Yes, um, and I believe they're developing that. Um, oh, brilliant! Fantastic. Which is an example of we well we hope we hope we hope they carry on, and that's an example of the sort of success that we want to see at the hackathon. Um, what sort of people applied to go on the hackathon? You know, who, who, who are you trying to appeal to? So we're trying to appeal to the broadest audience. Mm. Um, so getting as many different uh, skill sets, um, perspectives, um, problems that need solving as possible to try and get as diverse a product range at the end of the event as possible. It was our first event, so it was something of a proof of concept. Mm. So we had 60 people and about half of them were fellow graphene related PhD students. Yeah. And then in amongst that, we had some artists, we had some uh, musicians and we had people like some in uh, more industrially backed engineering people um a mix of students and professionals as well yeah. so it was it was reasonably diverse considering obviously the the people that we're uh, the people that we engage with yeah. um on a day-to-day and the people that we therefore sort of had the most access to we had a really diverse pool of people signing up we actually had 100 people sign up for what was a 60 person event yeah uh, which really blew us away because yeah it was it was really nice to see so we're really hoping to carry some of that momentum on from more diverse backgrounds right i I understand you've got two more hackathons coming up i I saw on the one of the on the ktn website you're doing a virtual hackathon tell me about that how 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 does a virtual hackathon work yeah so this was sort of an an idea that we had we were were hoping to host a hackathon in october Mm, yes Um, this was this was before covid really yeah Um, that's been moved to to march next year is that correct yes so that's been penciled in uh for march Uh, we're very lucky we've got um a great venue uh the bright building uh, yeah. at Manchester Science Park who've been very flexible with us um, mm. and try and have something in the meantime and to maybe be creative and, and um, run something online so there'll be less slightly less like hacking involved mm. and it's we won't be able to get people to make products and pitch them in exactly the same way but we're hoping to have a few days of multimedia talks uh, seminars maybe some like podcasts by PhD students and experts in the graphing community and beyond uh, some of our sponsors and partners um, giving sort of short format talks over the course of a few days uh, and then have a series of more conceptual challenges that people can um, engage with so a, like a particular problem in a, in a given industry for instance and then get people to think about how graphene could uh, impact that problem uh, when are you hoping to to do that have you got a date scheduled yet or is it still up in the air no, it's still in the pipeline yeah so we're um we're, we're working on it basically um and we're very ha- very happy to um be collaborating with ktn um on this virtual event which really trying to um leverage both their their network and their expertise in in running this sort of event we'll have we'll have news coming coming shortly yeah. Yes, we'd love to have you on board and contribute in that sort of way. That's exactly the sort of thing we're thinking of having. Um, but yeah, as I said, we'll have we'll have information shortly, and we're hoping to ha- hoping to run it before the end of the year. Um, and the, the 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 sort of live event that's March, isn't it? But can people apply for it now? Yes. Yeah, so there's there's a um, there's a page on our website where you yeah. can register your interest, but that will add you to a mailing list, uh, and obviously that will be uh, where you can find out first about applications being open. I mean, thank you, thank you for for being being. A very incredibly supportive partner well it's been great to speak to you today chris and thank you for your time and uh, as sponsors of the hackathon we're really looking forward to a great event um whether it's virtual or real we're really looking forward to it so yeah thank you so are we